Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U online instruction. Yeah, in this lecture, I'd like to uh, just describe very briefly what we uh, know about the nuclear shell structure of nucleons when they're trapped inside of a nucleus. And uh, in order to conduct this discussion, uh, I'd like to uh, try to make an analogy to what we already know about the electronic states in atoms and the uh, uh, electronic shell structure that uh, we discussed uh, back when we were uh, worried about the uh, electron states in the hydrogen atom. So, uh, by way of reminder, uh, the electronic shell structure for atoms is based on uh, this type of a diagram, right? You recall that we, uh, uh, we discovered these quantum numbers uh, N and script L, and these quantum numbers N and script L uh, can be grouped into different shells, and these different shells can hold different numbers of electrons. So, for instance, if you focus on the principal quantum number N, for the N equals 1 st uh, state for electrons and atoms, uh, that's referred to as the K shell, and uh, that, that designation is a historic designation. Uh, uh, the K shell holds two electrons, and so there would be then a shell of electrons surrounding a nucleus that hold precisely two electrons. The, uh, the, the uh, principal quantum number N equals 2 gives rise to the L shell electrons, and uh, these L shell electrons would then uh, allow you, because of the degeneracy of these various uh, electronic states, this L shell would then be allowed to uh, contain eight electrons, right? Two from the 2s orbital, six from the 2p orbital, right? And so on and so forth. So you can, you can look at the different shells. The different shells refer to the same principal quantum number n. And what you find is these shells give rise to uh, electrons that contain 2, 8, 18, 32 electrons based on the, uh, the degeneracy of these, these quantum states. So how do these shells manifest themselves in nature? Well, if you look at the, uh, for instance, the stability of atoms, what you find is that if you measure the ionization energy of, of different atoms as a function of the atomic number of the, uh, uh, of the individual atoms, you'll find that uh, some atoms are extremely stable, right? In particular, the helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon uh, a sequence of, of elements which comprise the inert gas elements, right? Those elements uh, have a very high, relatively uh, speaking, uh, high uh, ionization energies compared to the elements just adjacent to them. And of course, if you look at the, uh, the number of electrons that these different uh, inert gas uh, atoms have, right, they just mirror these uh, quantum states these that we discussed in the previous slide, right? So this is, this is the L shell, the M shell, and so on and so forth. These, 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 these numbers of electrons produce very stable atoms. And for that reason, these, these uh, energies uh, or these numbers of electrons are referred to as magic numbers, right? And they, they allow you to, to understand how the uh, electron states in atoms are organized. Um, from, from those, those magic numbers, you can then start to order these different uh, electron states and uh, these different electron states are filled in a particular order that allow you to reproduce these magic numbers which are observed experimentally, right? And of course, the whole argument is driven by these four quantum numbers, N script L, M sub, M sub script L, and M sub S, right? And uh, by systematically varying these, these quantum numbers and by paying attention to the ranges uh, that these quantum numbers can have, you produce this ordered array of energy states, uh, which when filled actually reproduce the, uh, the magic numbers 
that are observed experimentally in the ionization energies, let's say, of, of all the elements in the periodic table. So the, the question is, can we make a similar argument based on stability of, of nuclei uh, that mirrors, that somewhat mirrors this argument that was made for uh, uh, electron states and solids? And so we might begin by um, looking at the binding energy per nucleon. This is a curve that we showed in the previous lecture, right? And we can look for local uh, uh, regions of stability, right? So uh, uh, if you blow up the uh, rapid increase in the binding energy per nucleon for these light nuclei, right, it's pretty easy to see that the helium-4 nucleus, which contains two protons and two neutrons, has a local peak, which indicates that that particular nucleus is more stable than nuclei uh, just adjacent to it in this chart. Uh, there are smaller peaks for carbon-12 and oxygen-16, which are evident in this, in this, in this uh, binding energy per nucleon chart. Uh, there's uh, been a large number of studies looking for these conditions uh, in which the uh, the binding energy of these various nuclei um, are large, and I just just show you a number of pictures to to uh, a number of charts to indicate the number of studies that have been performed over the years looking for these stable configurations of of, of neutrons and protons. So this particular chart um, plots the neutron number in a nucleus, and it it tells you the binding energy of the last neutron in that nucleus. And you can see that there are peaks in this binding energy of that last neutron. These peaks occur at uh, neutron number 28, 50, 82, 126, right? So that would be an indication that whenever you have a nucleus that has 28, 50, 82, or 126 neutrons, you've achieved a very stable situation. If you look at deviations from the uh, experimental binding energies from this uh, this Weizsäcker mass formula, right? I, I, I again found this chart on the web, and it shows that there are local uh, deviations in the binding energy from this uh, empirical formula. These binding energies, uh, these cha these peaks in the binding energy, again occur. Uh, for neutron numbers of 28, 50, 82, 126. So there's another indication that these particular nuclei, when they contain these magic number of neutrons, uh, they produce a, a, a very stable nucleus. Um, you can also look at the relative abundance of, of, of different elements of different nuclei. So here's the relative abundance versus the uh, uh, atomic mass number A. Uh, this is for uh, uh, mass numbers greater than 50. You can see that there's a, a very high relative abundance for iron 56. We've already made the point that that's an extremely stable nucleus. But again, if you look at um, the, the neutron numbers and proton numbers, these, these values of 50, 82, 126 keep appearing over and over again. So this, um, this plot is probably the, the most comprehensive uh, plot for nuclear stability that I'm aware of. It was published in 1972. And what this plot uh, attempts to show is that uh, for these vertical lines uh, that represent neutron number and the vertical lines that represent the proton numbers, uh, there are peaks in the stability of, of these different nuclei. And these peaks in the stability of these nuclei are telling you that, uh, are suggesting that these, these, uh, these magic numbers of neutrons and protons, right, um, produce uh, uh, a very stable uh, nuclei. So if we take the, uh, the uh, quantum numbers that we derive for the um, uh, uh, electrons in solids, right, uh, it turns out we can do a reasonable job of reproducing the first few uh, of these magic numbers. So theoretically, we would expect peaks uh, 
uh, using uh, uh, an interaction potential that's given by this model, we would expect uh, very stable nuclei to occur uh, when the number of nucleons in the nucleus is 2, 8, 18, 20, 34, 40, right? Experimentally, we look at the number of protons and neutrons in the nuclei, which are very stable. Uh, we get pretty good agreement between the first two magic numbers of 2 and 8. We get a slight disagreement uh, with the magic number 18, but uh, from here on out, things get pretty bad, right? The, the agreement there's not much agreement, right? Because experimentally, we're finding that uh, nuclei that contain 28, 50, and 82 protons, 28, 50, 82 neutrons are very stable. Uh, the, uh, the ordering of these uh, uh, nuclei, nucleon states according to this model for the uh, interaction potential energy would predict, predict uh, magic numbers of 20, 34, and 40. So there's pretty significant discrepancy here. And so that gives some indication that these empirical models, while they're pretty good for small nuclei, right, start to fail as the number of neutrons and protons uh, increases uh, beyond roughly, let's say, 20 protons, 20 neutrons. So this was a real puzzle, right? And uh, it was finally solved in 1949. Um, by uh, different physicists uh, working at different institutions. Uh, and the uh, key insight was that uh, the coupling between script L and M sub S for uh, nucleons in a nuclear potential well, that coupling was completely different than it was for electrons in a, in a hydrogenic uh, potential well. And in particular, they realized that the shape of the potential well depended on whether the spin of the nu nucleon was either parallel or anti-parallel to the angular momentum of, the, of that, that nucleon. So there, there's, there's this difference, this slight difference in the shape of the uh, nuclear potential well that depends on the orientation of S with respect to L. And so that just simply means that there's a very strong coupling now between script L and M sub S, and that gives rise to the definition of a new quantum number J, which is equal to script L plus M sub S. And since M sub S is either plus one half or minus one half, the allowed values of J are either L plus one half or L minus one half, and that gives rise to half integer uh, quantum numbers J. Uh, according to this coupling scheme, right? So, with that insight, uh, uh, the um, the ordering of the uh, nucle nucleon energy levels was then possible, and this is this is now my understanding of the ordering of these various nucleon energy levels. The virtue of this ordering is that they uh, very nicely reproduce these. Uh, magic uh, numbers, right, of, of 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, and 82, right? And uh, the designation of the uh, quantum states now rely on this, uh, this index J, which is a half integer index, and the degeneracy of each state is now equal to 2J plus 1. So, for instance, if we look at the 1P 3 half state for nucleons in a in a nucleus, right, this particular energy state will hold 2j plus 1 nucleons. Since j is 3 halves, we multiply j by 2, we get 3. So this particular uh, state will hold uh, 3 plus 1 or, or 4 uh, uh, nucleons, which is indicated by this, this number right here. So the ordering of the states is different than uh, electronic states. And the degeneracy of the states is completely different than uh, electronic states. But once this was worked out, right, the ability to predict these magic quantum numbers uh, or magic nucleon numbers where the nuclei were very stable, uh, that, that scheme was recovered. And so that gave uh, people confidence that this ordering scheme was, in fact, correct. So... Uh, what you now find is you now find uh, uh, the allowed energy states for nucleons in a nucleus, 
uh, can be represented by these, uh, this coupling scheme, which focuses on the quantum number J rather than on L and S, uh, L and M sub S and M sub L as electron states were, were coupled, right? And this then gives rise to these allowed energy states, which are now populated as, as various uh, nucleons are, are used to uh, uh, fill up a nucleus and produce the different uh, nuclear structures that, that are required for uh, all the chemical elements in the periodic table. So this is a very qualitative discussion. It just tries to give you some feeling that uh, the, a lot of the ideas that we uh, uh, developed to describe electrons in atoms apply to describe nucleons in nucleuses. Uh, the difference is the coupling between the quantum numbers is different. The shape of the potential well, right, is completely different for the nuclear uh, case than it is for the uh, atomic case. The degeneracy of the states are completely different, right? So I list the degeneracy of each state uh, by the, the numbers associated with the different states. Uh, but uh, ultimately, this 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 uh, ordering of the energy states does match experiment uh, in many ways, and so this is this is now the uh, I believe the accepted form uh, for the uh, energy states of nucleons in in, the, in a nucleus. So that's all I wanted to say about this. I just just wanted to introduce you to the concept. Um, what we're going to discuss next is we're going to uh, consider how these how stable these various nuclei are. It turns out that um, these tremendous uh, forces that try to, to repel protons from nuclei, uh, these tremendous forces do in fact give rise to a nuclear decay process. Uh, very few of these nuclei are stable for uh, uh, very long periods of time. Most of them uh, tend to decay and uh, when they decay, they always decay into a more stable nucleus. So uh, we'll discuss that in our next, next lecture, which is going to be focused on nuclear decay.